And uh, again, we are very grateful that you all uh, are here today. We thank you so much uh, to the media for your care, uh, for these families, for this extraordinary um, situation that they have had to endure now for uh, the past nearly, uh, nearly four years uh, in May. And so uh, these are families that we love deeply uh, as a Commonwealth of Virginia that we all have to support together. Uh, and we have to honor the lives and the memories uh, of their incredible loved ones who uh, you all see right here, uh, their faces, and their names. Uh, these are not just pictures, these are people, these are souls, these are stories. Uh, these are hearts and minds that will live with us forever. Uh, and this was a tragedy, it was an injustice. I think one of the greatest injustices that we have seen uh, in the history of Virginia and perhaps of our nation. Uh, now is the time for closure, uh, it is the time for truth, it's the time to support these families. Uh, it's time to elevate uh, our Commonwealth. And uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that. But uh, as part of that elevation, as part of that justice, uh, I believe it's very important uh, to hear directly uh, from these family members who carry forward the stories, uh, carry forward uh, not only the pain, but the promise uh, of getting to a place of truth, of transparency, uh, and ultimately of justice for every single one of the families. Uh, and so with that, I would like to begin uh, to call up uh, any family member who would like to uh, make a statement. Matt, I think uh, I'd like to maybe call you up first. Uh, and so again, if you would just say your name, a name of your loved one, come, come here. Thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, you'll hear from each one of the family members. So Matt, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you, thank you. Um, my name is Matt Gale. I'm speaking on behalf of my mother, Mary Lou Gale, because she couldn't be here. My mother, Mary Lou Gale, was a lifelong resident of the city of Virginia Beach. She loved this city and the people in it. So much so that in addition to volunteering all over town, teaching Sunday school at St. John the Apostle Catholic Church, coaching cheerleading through the Courthouse League, organizing reunions with Cox High School, on top of all of that, she worked for 24 years as a municipal employee for all of the people of Virginia Beach. 24 years for those many years of dedicated service to the citizens of Virginia Beach she was rewarded by being brutally murdered at work when on the cusp of retirement snatched from the life she'd scrabbled together as a single mother snatched from her children from her beloved grandchildren and from her siblings snatched from the years of leisure that should have been her reward after a lifetime of public service. She was killed by a coworker who should not have been there. While security protocols and police officers that should have been in place were not or couldn't get in the building. In the years since her untimely and preventable death, her 24 years of service have not earned her grieving or distraught family any answers or accountability. Instead, we've been met with manipulation, obfuscation, and lies. We've waited and suffered and waited for the city to do right by my mother and the other victims. That wait ends today. On behalf of my mother, on behalf of all the victims of this tragedy, I demand the truth. I demand answers, accountability, and justice. And I'm calling on every resident of Virginia Beach every person of conscience in the Commonwealth of Virginia, in the United States, and beyond to join me in that demand. Virginia Beach, my hometown, for 24 years my mother worked for you. Now it's your turn, our turn, to work for her and for all the victims of this tragedy, to demand answers, accountability, and justice. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. God bless you. And Matt's amazing sister uh, is here as well, uh, so I want to recognize her. Thank you so much. Um, any other family members would like to come up and make a statement? And we have some statements also to read, but if there are any family members who would like to speak or be heard, uh, please feel free to take this opportunity. Please Brown, so much. All right. Um, my name is Dwight Brown. I'm the brother of Lakita Brown. And um, I just want to say that as a group, all of the victims of this crime um, have been irreparably damaged, right? Um, some physically, all of us emotionally. And while there's really nothing that can be done to heal that wound, it's something that we just have to learn to live with the rest of our lives. Um, us getting justice 
for all the victims and getting the truth about everything helps us manage that pain. So that's what we're asking for. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Brown. Thank you. Sorry. Any other family members like to come up? And... Yeah, please, please. Come on out, please. My name is Bob Crutzinger. I'm here to honor my sister, Mary Lou Crutzinger Gale. We, we want the truth. Uh, we want accountability and the lack of transparency is just terrible. Uh, and that's all I can say. We miss our sister and we feel bad for all the families involved. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Please, please, of course. Do you want to hold that? Yes, sir. Of course. Hi, my name is Sonia Snelling, the wife, 37 years of Bert Snelling. He was born and raised here in Virginia Beach. He worked as a construction uh, person for a long time. Uh, he became his, uh, an owner of an S Corp standing firm builders here uh, and has added so much to this city. He's been a part of the Commonwealth, Hampton, Newport News, Portsmouth, Chesapeake, everywhere. Um, he did his last work was with Eagle Construction, which is why he was here that day. And just to set this record, all the many records straight, he was not here for a permit on company business. He was here to, to talk with someone to uh, get permission to move an HVAC unit closer to the home for a walkthrough on the next Tuesday, three days away or he had to move, uh, have the people come in over the weekend and move it to the other side of the home because it was too close to the property line. There was a misunderstanding on the blueprint. So the person he was gonna be able to talk to was out in the field. How he got notified that that person was back here, I don't know, I didn't ask that question, but that's why he was here and I got to speak with him from 3.57 to 403 so no he was not killed at four o'clock he was in the parking lot we now know where he was but it has nothing to do from the city they we had to fight from may to october before we could share any information that we had with a detective of virginia beach and we are we are seeking truth and accountability and we are tired of being manipulated around and being forgotten or no my husband did not work for the city but he made improvements in this city he added to this city and he deserves to be honored thank you thank you so much god bless you thank you thank you yes absolutely oh you want to read too absolutely um okay uh, denise want to pull your statement up here See that okay? Are you okay? Right there, yeah. And if you want to turn sideways, you can do it. Is that enough? Okay. Is that better? I think so. Okay. Okay. Tell me your name and. All right. Good morning. My name is Denise Smallwood. I am the twin sister of Joshua Hardy. Um, unfortunately, I'm out here on this day. You know. Uh, to represent him and the other families. Uh, we dearly miss our loved ones. On May 31st, 2019, that day came with great heartache and sadness. Just think, it did not start out that way. On that day, I remember leaving work at four o'clock and I told my friend at work, I said, this has been a great day. I did not have a clue of what was to come minutes later. The devastation my family endured was unexplainable. My family, me and my family, we were told my brother expired immediately and that he was shot. 10 times. Our lives would never be the same. The aftermath has been unbelievable. 
unsettling, and downright shocking. I am sure the other families can testify to this. We have been stepped on, stepped across, ignored, pushed to the side, disrespected, lied to, deceived, tortured, and just totally forgotten. It is time for justice. It is time for Virginia Beach to step up and on own their toxic environment and take care of the 531 families. I want to thank you all for hearing my statement this morning, and God bless. God bless you. Thank you, Any other family members? Um, we also have a statement that we want to read from uh, Debbie Barato, and I want to bring up uh, Dr. Renee Carr, uh, who's going to read that statement and also offer her thoughts uh, and reflections about the situation and about these amazing families. So, Dr. Carr, would you come up? Hello, and thank you. This is a message from Debbie Barato. May 1st, 2019, mass shootings. I wish I could be there. However, I will be when I can. After almost four years of the mass shootings, we have learned so much of what the city is doing. Nothing on behalf of our families or survivors. I could cover a lot in this statement. However, I will try to be short and to the point. No one, I say no one, has gained anything from the executions of May 31st. Victims except for the Virginia Beach government. There was money made by the city at the expense of our loved ones' lives, at the expense of our suffering and continued intimidation, rudeness, and just straight out inhumane behavioral towards us all involved. The VB government has acted as these employees never existed and were of no value. It is a constant reminder and the stabbing pain created to wear us down. The city wrote out COVID to run out our statute of limitations. City almost wants the families to disappear. No, that won't happen. There is so much added damage to our suffering. How can we heal? Treatment inside Building 2 was unbelievably out of line. Employees have been our connection to what is and what was going on. The city needs to be in the forefront of the truth. These are our demands. Transparency, respect, honor and not being dismissed of our loved ones by actions and not empty words. Stop using VBS strong logo. The city has ways to prove that VBS is strong. Stop treating families as if we are the criminals. VB government has lied over and over. And finally, bring justice to the people, families, survivors and victims. The truth is what we want, not escaping what we know. We are not suffering or being hurt by the truth, only by your lies and actions. Show the truth now. Debbie Barato. Thank you again. I'm Dr. Renee Carr, I'm a psychologist, and I want to encourage everyone to understand that there is no statute of limitations for pain. There's no statute of limitations for suffering or trauma. One way that you reinforce trauma is by ignoring a traumatic situation that causes a reinforcement, that causes a sense of hopelessness. And right now what we're seeing is a reinforcement that there is no care or concern of what has happened. It's senseless that not only were 12 lives taken in a city government building, but also that the city government is not showing any care or concern. This reinforces a double sense of trauma and causes helplessness. If we allow this type of reaction to continue to senseless deaths on government property, it will only perpetuate other citizens feeling helpless, feeling hopeless that their government will protect them. And when you have that sense of hopelessness, that creates an internal desire to then go take hands or matters into your own hands. And we can't allow this to continue. So I encourage everyone in the Commonwealth of Virginia, let's make compassion common. Let's make consideration common. And let's just be kind and stop cruelty. Let's elevate and recognize that we can indeed help heal by being honest. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Dr. Carr. 
And uh, now I would like to bring up, before I bring up uh, Jason Nixon, I'd like to bring up uh, Gary McCollum, uh, who you all know here in this community, uh, a national leader, a leader here in Virginia Beach. He has uh, met with these families. He has uh, helped lead the charge to keep their stories alive, to get them justice, to fight uh, for what these families uh, deserve uh, and is long overdue. Uh, and so I'd like to now bring up uh, Gary McCollum to give him some remarks. I'm uh, Gary McCollum. I'm a minister. Uh, I'm a father. Uh, I'm a husband. I'm a citizen of Virginia Beach. I am a member of the Virginia Beach Interdenominational Ministers Conference. And we stand with these families. You've, you've heard a lot from these families already. But the one word that you continue to hear is truth. Scripture tells us that, that the truth will make us free. It's, it's, it's not by accident that we're standing here today with these families, and we are with these families. You've heard their pain. You've heard their suffering. I think it's an object lesson that while we're here, we had noise coming from this building. That's an object lesson into how these families basically have been treated over the last three years. A total disregard for the pain and the suffering. But beyond that, I'm hopeful. Because as I shared with the families, what's happening right now is a miracle. Because they are coming together. They're standing strong with each other so that the truth will come out. And the truth will. The truth about what happened, who their family members were, and what they meant to this community, and what they will continue to mean in generations to come. And so we stand with them, the ministerial community, the faith community, we stand with these families. And we told them last night, and we will continue to tell them, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The morning starts one second after midnight, even when it's still dark. And it may be dark right now, but that sun is gonna shine and the truth will shine as to what happened on that tragic day and the lives that were lost and the generations uh, that will follow us will know their stories. Thank you very much and to God be the glory. Amen. Thank you so much. And are there any other family members of Dr. Jason who would like to be heard right now? Okay, great. And, and so with that, um, I'm going to make some closing remarks. Uh, but I wanted, of course, to first uh, bring up uh, Jason Nixon, uh, whose amazing wife, Kate Nixon, and their three beautiful daughters um, have exemplified the strength uh, of these families united, have uh, carried forward uh, this important uh, mission uh, on behalf really of all of us here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, Jason has been uh, an extraordinary voice, a uh, champion in so many ways uh, for these families, for the truth, for transparency, uh, for justice. Uh, he wants what's right. Uh, and he has been in this fight uh, with these families, uh, but sometimes it feels very lonely uh, in that fight, but he's no longer alone. Uh, we are all here with him, and I believe that all eight and a half million Virginians uh, will be with him and will be with these families, uh, will elevate to get justice. Uh, and so, Jason, I want to personally bring you up. I also want to thank you uh, for everything that you've done. Um, I want to applaud your courage, your steadfastness. Uh, you always have said that you do this for Kate, for your daughters, for these families, which have become your family. And the city employees. And the city employees, everyone who was impacted. Uh, there were so many people who were impacted who also uh, deserve answers and justice uh, but Jason you've taken on a special role uh, in this process and so again we thank you so much we ask everyone uh, to not uh, try to take opportunities to bring these families down but instead to lift them up um, the day uh, is over uh, where these families are the targets uh, of uh, what's gone on so far these families uh, should be the object of our compassion of our love we should be lifting them up them up at every moment and if that's not happening uh, and if that's not happened in the past, well, it starts today. Uh, we're going to see to it that that uh, occurs. So, Jason, again, thank you. Uh, I'd love for you to say some sure. words here. All right. So, 
Everybody knows who I am. My wife was Kate Nixon. She was an engineer five in the state of Virginia Beach. She was one of the highest engineers up there and was privy to a lot more information than most family members here at work. Me and Kate talked every day. There's not one thing Kate didn't tell you about the state of Virginia Beach that I don't know. I know about all the dirty billing secrets, all the, you know, I know everything. If, you, if we want to go to court and testify, we can do that. A lot of people might be wearing silver bracelets by the end of the day. Um, the reason I'm, I'm fighting so hard is because they tar us out like garbage. The first day of this happening, it was, no one knew what was going on. We were all in a fog. And the Red Cross had come and asked see Virginia Beach, can we help? Can we help? Can we bring liaisons in? And I got this from the State Investigation Commission. They told me about this. I, one of the committee members was, one, was part of the Red Cross. And she said, the city of Virginia Beach said no. We have this. We'll take care of this. And they did that for one reason only, because they put firefighters and police, uh, and, uh, police officers in our homes to watch what lawyers we were talking to, what family members we were talking to about. They controlled and manipulated us from the very day one. They did not want us to know what was going on in the city. They didn't care about us because if they really cared about us, they would tell you the dirty secret about the bond. All our employee, all of our loved ones were bonded and insured. City of Virginia Beach made money off of our family members. And you can look that up. The City of Virginia Beach has not paid one dime to us that we don't deserve. I asked the City of Virginia Beach and, and officials, I said, I really need to talk about this dental, medical, and eye insurance. You know, I'm going to be getting out of the Air Force because my PTSD and sleep apnea and other issues I've had. And we're going for medical review board. There's no guarantee I'm going to have medical, dental, and eye insurance for my children. You know what their response was? Kate did not technically retire from the city of Virginia Beach, so they couldn't give me medical, dental, and eye insurance. What a slap in the face that was to me and my family and my girls. I'm not the only one being treated that way. Patrick Gallagher, he was told the same thing when they said, okay, well, we were seeking litigation because we wanted answers. And they said, well, if you seek litigation, you may lose all your benefits. Well, now you've got a father of three that doesn't have an income because my wife was a breadwinner and that's just the way our family dynamics worked. And you put, you put, you back me in a corner. You didn't give me the option to seek litigation because you said there was no case. You said, if you win against us, you'll end up losing and you'll lose your benefits. Well, that's not the case because the benefits would have stayed intact. Even if I had gone to court and lost, I would still get my benefits because I wouldn't have received, you can receive one or the other, but you can't receive both. And I did not know that. And no one told me that. And that to me, was disgusting. It was disgusting the way the city intimidated us. They, they didn't want us to come around to each other. Uh, Joe Samaha from Virginia Tech got hold of me and told me that's one of the tactics. You keep people separated. You don't want family members talking to each other. And that's what Virginia Beach did to us. Uh, you know, there's not a day that goes by that I don't wish I had gone to lunch with Kate that day and been with her in the building because maybe I could have got her to go home early. You know, I was supposed to meet with her for lunch, and she called me up 406 and said, um, you know, Jason, I've been shot. Call 911. And that was the last time I talked to Kay. I said, I'll call right now. And I raced down here, beat the cops down here. Actually, I was running up to the building, and they pulled me back and frisked me and pushed me down the steps and said, I can't go in. I said, he's on the second floor. He's military trained. I know where he's at. And they did, it was such chaotic. They didn't know what was going on. I saw people's bodies being put drug off on surfboards and, and blue trucks. I mean, I, I saw a lot and I heard a lot. And, and my wife, Kate, would not want this to go unanswered. She cared for the employees of the city of Virginia Beach. I know two city employees right now to this day are suicidal because of what's going on because they have not received counseling from Virginia Beach. BB Strong, don't get me started with that because I asked them about reimbursements for my counseling sessions. I've got a, probably about $12,000 in counseling bills I paid. I got $478 back from Victims Crime Fund, from Virginia Victims Crime Fund, because they said that you have to be financially, all your financial resources have to be exhausted. You have to be broke before they reimburse you for anything. But VB Strong said, oh no, we'll pick up the tab for that. I didn't see that. So where did the money go from VB Strong? I know the United Way, they said they pay for our funerals. Well, I looked into the workman's comp uh, rules and, and it says in workman's comp that you get ten thousand dollars in workman's comp just for funeral cost but united way took that money or they took it or somebody took it because i didn't see it on the workman's comp so i don't know where that money went there needs to be 
an over, a congressional oversight within to VB Strong, and we need to open the books up, and we need to see where the money went. Because right now, to this day, they're still collecting money off VB Strong. VB Strong was a shell of a corporation over in a building that now long, longer exists except for one office with two employees, and Centera Hospital has taken over the rest of the offices. Um, I, I can go on all day with you guys. Um, right now, I just want to let you guys know that these families are not going away. We have formed a group, and our group is called 531 Families United, and we are going to stay united, and they're not going to break us apart again. I learned that lesson from Joe Samaha from Virginia Tech Families because they did the same thing to Virginia Tech. And Re Virginia Beach just took the playbook out of Virginia Tech and, and made it three times worse. Um, if you guys have any questions or answer, and I can answer anything, I, I, just, I want to tell the truth about everything. If you look at any of my reports in the past, any newspaper reports, and Andrew, Andrew you, you, know, you can testify to this, everything I've said from day one has been true. I told them there was a laptop. All of a sudden there's a laptop. Uh, why wasn't it cataloged in the evidence? I don't know. We'll find out when we put the, the footprints and we look into it further, won't we? Uh, I don't want to give everything away to y'all. I mean, if you got questions, I want to, I want you to ask me directly, and I'll tell you right now. This is your time, because I've had a lot of people call me throughout the week and the past couple of weeks, and I, and I'm, so I refer them to Lauren Burr because I don't want to say too much to damage anything I've got going on right now. But I'm, I'm an open book, and I don't hide from nobody. Kate was a leader, and she took out for, took care of her people, and. I always would ask her, Kate, why are you doing the Civic League president? Why are you doing the soccer mom thing, the coaching, the swim, the swim team announcing, uh, the church advocate? And she's like, well, Jason, if I'm not going to do all this stuff, then who's going to do it for us? And I took that and I ran with it and I picked it up. And this is more than just about the families. This is about the city coworkers too, the city employees that walked over their loved ones that day that have severe PTSD. I just got the phone with one guy that said he wanted to be here, but he was having seizures from PTSD, which amazes me that nobody's helping these people. You've got an employee right now, the one that said, I won't be surprised this place gets shot up. He pulled me on the side and said, Jason, I wasn't just talking about Dwayne Craddock. I was also talking about another employee that's still employed in the city of Virginia Beach right now today. Is that scary or what? That's, what has Virginia Beach done to change anything? What have they done? I haven't seen it. I have, I've got right now, because of the state investigation, and I was so grateful to get this, even though it was on a shoestring budget and it was set up to fail, we've got some, uh, a couple of decent people on that commission that are really trying to help us and get to the truth. And I've got over, what, 30 interviews right now from city, city employees, former city employees that are testifying on my behalf and collaborating with everything I've said from day one. See, Virginia and Beach don't know that yet. Now they do. I'm ready to go to war, and I'm not going to stop. I'm not afraid of nobody, and I'm not going to let anybody intimidate me anymore. Um, make threats all you want. I don't care. You can't take any more away from me. You already took away from me, and that was my wife, and my, my, my daughter's mother. So that's all I got to say. I'm probably say a lot more, honestly, but. <laughs> We'll take some questions at the end. Sure. Thank you so much. So stay, stay right. here. No, stay right here. Um, so uh, we want this midnight of injustice to end today. Uh, it's time for a new day of truth, a new day of transparency, uh, a new day of hope uh, for these families. And uh, what they have been through, what they have endured through, what they have gone through, what they have grown through, uh, is one of the most extraordinary journeys that we've ever seen uh, in Virginia and in our nation. Uh, they are a powerful symbol of hope. And what the shooter did in this building behind us echoed in these halls on that day. But what we all do for these families will echo throughout history. And now is our moment. Eight and a half million Virginians are counting on us to lift these families up. Uh, the eyes of the world are once again right here on Virginia Beach. And here's the note of hope. Uh, having served this Commonwealth, having represented uh, this amazing community and all eight and a half million Virginians, uh, I know who Virginia Beach is when it's at its best. Uh, I know who Virginia is when it is at its best. Uh, I have seen spectacular human elevation 
in some of the most difficult circumstances. I have seen people rise to the occasion, rise to the moment. Uh, and I know eight and a half million Virginians will not allow these 12 families to be left behind uh, because we know that these really are our families. These are not 12 set apart families, they're part of our commonwealth. These are our mothers and brothers and sisters and grandparents and aunts and uncles. Uh, if you look at their faces, if you see the faces of their loved ones, this is us and we can't let us down. Uh, and so for three and a half years, uh, these families have to had to fight on their own. They no longer have to fight on their own. Uh, we are all in this together. Uh, I do not want one more year to go by without justice for these families. I do not want one more tourism season to go by without support for these families. I do not want one more general assembly session to go by without transparency and truth and compassion uh, by Virginia for these families. Uh, the moment for justice is right now. The time for excuses and silence and kicking the can down the road and reasons why we can't support these families is over. The time for supporting these families and being there for them in a tangible, concrete way has begun. We are entering a powerful new season of truth and of hope. And I implore everyone who is listening to the pain they've heard from these families, who is looking at the visible heartbreak in their eyes, to think about your own mother, to think about your own father, your own son, your own daughter, your grandparents. And picture them for a second and pause. And now think about how your family would feel having gone through this. And would you want the city of Virginia Beach, would you want the Commonwealth of Virginia to leave you behind? We know the answer to that is no. We know the answer to their pain is the truth and it's justice. And so these families have suffered in every way imaginable and therefore justice should be given to them in every way imaginable. Uh, we have talked a lot to the Virginia Tech families uh, who have gone through also horrific tragedy. These are extraordinary human beings uh, who even to this day care so deeply about others that they have reached out to these families uh, and join uh, a fraternity and a sorority that they never wanted to join uh, of pain. But they have transformed their pain into purpose and that's what these families have done as well in honor of their amazing loved ones, to celebrate their lives, to make sure that they did not die in vain. In fact, their lives made us all better. And we have to, as a commonwealth right now, in this moment with no more excuses, be there for them. And so I am grateful to uh, join uh, these amazing families in this work, in this effort. I'm grateful to be joined by, again, my co-counsel, Thomas B. Martin uh, of Martin Law P. LLC, uh, Dr. Renee Carr, uh, Lauren Burke, Gary McCollum, uh, and so many others, uh, again, who care so deeply about this cause. But again, I want to uh, conclude this on a note of hope. Virginia Beach is an extraordinary community. Uh, I've been honored to be here, honored to represent some of the most amazing people you will find in the world. But it's important that to be the Virginia Beach that we know you can be and that we can be, we have to elevate in this moment. It is not enough to do what's been done. It is not enough to leave these families on their own. Uh, and so as a part of that, we are going to tomorrow uh, be taking these families to Richmond, Virginia. Uh, we will be there for the next meeting of the commission. Uh, we will have family members with us. And uh, those who are not with us physically are always with us in spirit. Uh, these families are truly united. Uh, so to every family member uh, who is at home, uh, or uh, is not able to be with us today, just know that you are here, that you are represented and you will continue uh, to be represented by these families united. Uh, and so we will go to Richmond. We uh, will be meeting with the Attorney General. Uh, we thank him uh, for uh, what he's done uh, for these families and we look forward uh, to that meeting. We're reaching out to Governor Yunkin uh, as well and look forward to meeting with the Governor, uh, the Lieutenant Governor, uh, Winston Earl Sears. We also are are looking forward to meeting with uh, delegates and senators. Uh, we have extraordinary leaders in the General Assembly where I was proud to serve uh, as Lieutenant Governor, as President of the Senate. And I know who the General Assembly can be uh, when it is at its best. But the time for that justice is right now. I don't want another year, another session uh, to go by without these families finally getting justice. 
and that's what we're going to fight for. Uh, his truth is marching on. Uh, we firmly believe that God is still on the throne. Uh, the truth will finally be revealed, uh, and that these families will get the help and the hope that they are bringing to so many people. So we thank the Virginia Tech families for their love, for their support. Uh, we thank everyone here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, this day is a new day in Virginia. It's a new day in Virginia Beach. So everything that they've had to endure uh, now has an opportunity to transform this community, to transform our Commonwealth, to create hope, uh, to bring triumph out of tragedy, to make sure that the lives of these extraordinary people and their extraordinary loved ones give more life to us all. So Virginia, it to me, in so many ways, as painful as it's been, as tough as it's been, uh, it's a great day. It's a great day of hope. Uh, but let's make that hope real. Uh, and we are going to fight uh, every step of the way to ensure that that happens. Um, I also want to uh, say thank you to the media. Uh, you all have been extraordinary. Uh, you've shown compassion and care. Uh, you have kept the stories of their loved ones alive. Uh, and I thank you for being here today, all of you, uh, because this is such an important moment in the life of the Commonwealth of Virginia. We have a once in a 100 year opportunity to elevate, to rise that crown of glory. The story will not end this way. Uh, and what I shared with the families as we all met last night is that uh, we are very grateful. We come from various walks of life, various faith traditions, uh, but what we truly all do believe is that we serve a God who does not know how to end a story in cruelty. Uh, we serve a God who only knows how to end a story with glory. But it requires all of us to do this work together. And I know that in my faith tradition, what I firmly believe and shared is that they will see their loved ones again. We will see them again. There's work to be done until we do. And when we do our work, I think they will be greeted with big hugs and smiles and cheers and thanking them for what they did to keep their memories alive, their families going. Uh, so now is not the time for reasons why you can't support these families. Now is the time for the Commonwealth of Virginia, the city of Virginia Beach, every single one of us to step up and to be there for them because they would be there for us. Uh, and we also have to do everything we can to end this gun violence in our Commonwealth, in our nation. We just saw a six-year-old bring a gun to school and shoot his teacher. I was with the families in Charlottesville uh, as they suffered unfathomable tragedy, as they have as well. Uh, these amazing uh, young men and women football players who were murdered. Uh, we know right here in Chesapeake, in Walmart, that same tragedy was visited upon those families. This has to stop. This culture of cruelty, this culture of gun violence, this culture that people's lives don't matter. That's part of what this day is all about. That's part of what these families fight is all about. Their extraordinary loved ones in their lives matter so much. But we've got to show as a Commonwealth of Virginia that we believe that. We can't simply say it in words. We cannot simply pay lip service to do a vigil, um, to simply tell these families we're with you. We have to show them that we are with them. And I truly believe that we will because I, I know an extraordinary Virginia, I know an extraordinary Virginia Beach, I have seen it up close and personal. In the midst of all the tragedy, I was in office, serving as Lieutenant Governor when this tragedy happened, and my heart broke. Every day I had to go up there on the dais in the Senate of Virginia, I thought about these families, and I look forward to the day that I could meet them all. Uh, and meeting them is a special privilege, uh, but meeting them where they are is an obligation for every single one of us. In Virginia, I know that you and we will rise to this moment. I know we'll elevate. I absolutely know it because I have seen it right here in Virginia Beach. Uh, and so these families have this capacity for love. Uh, they are worried about other families. They don't want this to happen to anyone else. To have that capacity for that care and love for other people as they are suffering through this unimaginable tragedy is a testament to their faith, to their character, to their loved ones. They are living embodiment of how powerful and how loving and how kind and compassionate their loved ones are. So Virginia, let's don't let them down. I know you won't. You never do. Uh, when you rise to elevate to be the best that you can be, I have seen it with my own eyes. I have felt it with my own heart. And this tragedy will be transformed into a triumph. It is a new day in Virginia and in Virginia Beach.
and we thank you all. We love you. Continue to be here for these families. We will uh, until justice is done. 2023 will be a powerful year for justice, for these families, for our commonwealth, and for our nation. So the eyes of the world, again, once again, are right here on Virginia Beach. And I know you're going to rise to the occasion. I know the Commonwealth of Virginia will join you. Uh, at the federal, state, and local level, let's finally bring these families closure, healing, truth, justice, and give hope to other people. That's why we are here. Uh, and so we are grateful to you. Uh, we love you all eight and a half million. We joined in the hearts across Blacksburg and Chesapeake uh, and everywhere else in the Commonwealth of Virginia that suffered the same tragedy, but has kept the faith, has maintained their hope, has maintained the ability to care for other people. Uh, so we had a lot of tears, a lot of hugs, but I am grateful that we also had a lot of smiles. Uh, in the thoughts of who we are fighting for and what we are fighting for. Uh, so we thank you, uh, we love you, and let's make sure these Virginia Beach 531 Families United are honored in the way that they should be, supported in the way that they should be, and that our Commonwealth is as great as we know it can be. So God bless you all, thank you for coming here today. Thank you. And we'll take any questions if you all would like. What legal avenues are you gonna pursue to um, get to justice? We are exploring all uh, options on the legal front. Again, with my uh, co-counsel, uh, Thomas B. Martin, who you all know. Uh, we represented uh, the Donovan Lynch family uh, and have been fighting for justice in that uh, case. But we are looking at all the options uh, on the table. Uh, but what we also want to do is to invite people to elevate, which is what we did in that matter. Uh, we got a record settlement for that family when they thought there was no hope for any justice. Uh, and so we were proud to get to work uh, with the city of Virginia Beach to work uh, with some wonderful uh, folks on that side in the city attorney's office, uh, Chris Boynton, also Gary Bryant uh, was representing uh, the officer in that case, uh, Jerry Harris, and so uh, they really elevated in, in a substantial way. Um, and we believe the city council did the same thing. Uh, we want that here. And so we're gonna explore all those options. Um, as you all know, I'm a former federal prosecutor. I was an assistant United States attorney in the Eastern District of Virginia, the Major Crimes and Narcotics Unit. Uh, we have tried cases successfully uh, over many years. We know exactly what we're doing when it comes to litigation, uh, but we also know that there's something even greater than that that this moment calls for. Uh, we need people to meet these families where they are. Uh, and it is a testament uh, to the cruelty that exists in our world that these families have not been supported up until this point. It can't go another year, it can't go another tourism season, it can't go another General Assembly session. Uh, because that speaks to who we are uh, and what is going to happen speaks to who we want to be. Uh, and so we are prepared uh, to do everything we need to do on the legal front. But we're also prepared to call people to do what we know they should have done already. Uh, and this is a moment of renewal for everybody, of redemption. Uh, and we're looking forward to that happening, uh, both here in Virginia Beach and Richmond, uh, and at the federal level. Why now? Talking about uh, with the Attorney General tomorrow, what specifically will you be asking people to Yeah, we're looking forward to a robust uh, conversation with these families. And, and again, we thank the Attorney General uh, for meeting uh, with the families, meeting with, with us. And, uh, you know, we'll t we talk about a number of things. Obviously, transparency, uh, finally getting the full truth. Uh, uh, there's, Jay said, obstruction, right, uh, of, of stopping the truth uh, from happening up to now. Um, also, as you all know, the Attorney General wrote a letter uh, criticizing the commission, uh, which obviously has had significant flaws and defects. Uh, there were you know, 21 members supposed to be on this commission, uh, 10 resigning, uh, less than a quorum showing up uh, to the second meeting. Uh, we have uh, David Karens, who's done a fantastic job, has tried to get to the truth and has not been allowed to do that. Um, and so, again, uh, the time for excuses, for obstruction, for obfuscation is over. It's done. It's over. The time for the truth is right now, because what we need to all really usher in is a new golden age of the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. There is not a person that I have met in the Commonwealth of Virginia who would be okay with their family being treated the way that these families have been treated. Right. Not one. And so if that is in fact the case, then why do we allow this to go on? Um, but again, 
I remain perpetually hopeful because I've seen it. I've seen Virginia Beach elevate. I've seen the Commonwealth of Virginia elevate through the worst tragedies imaginable, which is what these families have suffered. I have seen spectacular human elevation. And I know it's possible. And I know it's going to happen here, too. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk to the Attorney General about. We're looking forward to uh, also arranging a meeting with the governor uh, as well, the lieutenant governor, as I mentioned, uh, members uh, of all delegations in the House of Delegates and in the Senate. Uh, I've gotten to serve, again, with these extraordinary leaders. And I should be very clear, uh, this is completely nonpartisan. Uh, tragedy and justice don't have a party. These are human beings, hearts and souls. Uh, and so we need to all rise in this moment, to all be together. Uh, I had the pleasure of uh, being with these families. As I mentioned last night, I got to uh, hold uh, one of uh, Jason and Kate's beautiful daughters uh, in my arms. And uh, she is spectacular, uh, by the way. Uh, she's absolutely amazing. Uh, and she taught me so much, uh, even just in that brief time we had together, about the capacity of the human spirit to love under the most difficult circumstances about the power of what a family can do for each other. And in this family has done so much for themselves, well now it's time for the family of Virginia and Virginia Beach to be there for its family. These are our family members. These are not pictures on a screen. These are not cardboard cutouts. These are not stand-ins at a vigil. These are not props uh, to be exploited. These are human beings. And I believe that when it's all of our time. Uh, we are all gonna have to answer for who we are and what we have done for each other on this earth. And these families are doing exactly what they have been thrust in to do. They didn't ask for this mission, but they are dedicated themselves to it, just as their family members would do for them. These are our family members. So uh, Dr. King said that there comes a moment in life where silence is betrayal. We're at that moment now. Silence is no longer an option from our leadership uh, in the city of Virginia Beach, uh, not an option for our leadership in the General Assembly uh, or at the federal level. Uh, we have got to be there for these families because, as I said, the eyes of the world right now are right here, right here watching us. And they are going to look to see what we do. And as I said earlier, what the shooter did on May the 31st of 2019, it echoed in those halls. But what we do right now is going to echo throughout all of history. That's what's going to happen. And so we have got to rise to this moment, and I know we will elevate to it. I know we will. I absolutely know we will. You said you're entering a powerful new season of truth. Yes. Why now? What has changed? Because you could have done this a month ago. You could have done this three months ago. You could do it three months from now. Why is now the time that you guys are doing this and holding this press conference? It's a great question. Well. Now, Dr. King also said that the time is always right to do what's right. And I woke up today to an incredible sunrise right here in Virginia Beach. Uh, and I kind of marveled at it, actually, because it was a very cold day. There was frost on the ground. Um, and I looked up, though, and as the sun was, was rising, I thought that uh, there's a reason uh, that we all are here gathered today in this particular moment. Uh, I think this is way bigger uh, than what we've seen. It's way bigger than any of the fact-fighting, the bickering, the obfuscation, the obstruction. Um, it's a period of renewal and of redemption. And of course, we've had developments recently that confirm uh, not only what Jason Nixon has been saying from day one, uh, that the truth has not fully been told. Uh, there was this issue, as you all know, about this laptop, and this was not prompted by that. We were prepared to do this anyway, which is why I know that there's something way more important and way bigger happening right here. And uh, so I want Jason to come up as well. Come on. You, you, you ask why now? I've been doing this from day one. This is not just now. I, I've contacted an attorney up in Connecticut. This is not now. This has been going on from day one. There's not one thing that I've said that's not true. And you, ca you quote me on everything I've said. You go look through articles up. You read the newspapers. Every time I come out with something, the state of Virginia Beach changes the scenario. I don't know what scenario they're going to flip this time, but that laptop might <laughs> give them a little trouble. <laughs> Jason, how did you know about the, all this additional evidence? I, I knew about it. Rocket, right? Yeah, well, I saw them uh, at lunchtime when I picked Kate up from lunch. I would see with a laptop on his shoulder all the time. And when the police, the Texas came to my house, they're like, well, you need to have a laptop. 
I said, yeah, he did. He had a laptop. He had a personal computer. I've seen it on him all the time. Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he did. And, and, and got into a thing where I kept going back and forth. No, he did. He did. He did. I think I said it in your interview, too. I, 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 every time I've said something, it's been true. And it, it vindicates me in a way because there's a laptop. Now it's got out. And it is Wayne's laptop. I've seen the pictures. I know he's got an expense account on it. And it's not what's on it. It's what's been taken off of it. It's the, it's the footprints that we need to find out who orchestrated that, the confiscation of that laptop, where it came from. Did it come from the car when the shooter had the car with the guns in the car, which no, he, the police never, never told us about? He wasn't trying to uh, get killed that day. He wanted to escape. He had a plan. Uh, he had an expense account. He had something about going on a trip on his computer. That was on there, too. I saw that. Um, that's what people understand. Like <clears throat> Dwayne was very very cocky, very arrogant, very egotistical. He wouldn't have done what he'd done unless he wrote a manifesto and left some sort of something behind, which he did. Uh, the FBI from Quantico told me that he'd written a draft email and it was a kill list. And my wife's name was on it. And I believe a lot of these family members' names were on it too. And the Quantico FBI confirmed that with me when I was up in Richmond. And they also, I also said, you know, this commission is stacked. They know that too. That you have certain legislators that didn't want Virginia Beach to get damaged. So there's damage control. There's been damage control from day one in Virginia Beach. And I don't care if, if you don't think it's true, you just have to look at the facts. This whole case is so elementary from day one. Kate was looking for an engineer four position. Dwayne Craddock wanted that position. He wanted it bad, but he was an engineer three. He was incompetent. He didn't have the quality, quality or skills to do so. Coyote was the one that got the position. Well. He, he went and shot Coyote on the third floor for, for getting that job from Dwayne. And uh, he shot Laquita Brown. She was actually the first one on the third floor shot because uh, of the sexual harassment complaint he got against him. And then Mary Lou Gill, you know, she had um, talked to her supervisor several times about Dwayne and his activities. And she knew about Laquita Brown. Uh, it, it's funny how these HR records don't, nobody knows where they're at no more. And I, and I, I said that.